Hey everybody, it's Glider Cat and it's time to play. All right, today we're taking a first look at an upcoming colony builder called Timberborn. This one's slated to hit early access on Steam sometime in Q1 of 2021, which you can wishlist and follow it on Steam now if you like. Uh, the game is being very actively developed right now, and they have a really nice Discord set up with frequent updates from the developers, along with contests and beta key giveaways, all kinds of stuff. It's just a really cool Discord, and they, uh, they do a great job of engaging with the community. So the game is not for sale yet, so definitely go check out the Discord uh, for a chance to grab a key and maybe start playing uh, Timberborn. On the subject of keys, the developers provided me with a key so that I can bring this content to you, and my thanks goes out to them. I appreciate their support of the channel, and I would appreciate your support as well. So please do consider giving this video a thumbs up if you like it, and maybe subscribing, as that helps me keep the channel afloat and growing. Now back to the game. Timberborn takes place after humans have left the world, and now your colony of beavers sets out to see if they can do a better job of building a sustainable civilization. Let's take a first look at some of the footage from their game trailer, and then we'll come back and take a closer look at what the game is all about. Here we go. Okay, so we saw quite a bit happening in that trailer. At the very end, you might have noticed some explosions followed by the town getting flooded. Water dynamics and manage water management are very big parts of this game. You know, you can imagine so it being about beavers. Uh, and rerouting rivers with dynamite is a real thing. However, it can result in both survival or destruction. So you got to be a little careful because you are quite literally playing with dynamite. Anyway, let's get back to the beginning of the game. Yeah, so this is a little colony I started. If you look at the top um, right here, it shows that I'm on day two, so I'm not very far into the game. You'll also notice here in the top right corner, you've got the ability to pause the game by hitting this uh, X zero. Then you've got times one speed, times three, or times seven. We'll leave it at times one for now, but there are times, particularly maybe when the nighttime comes and we'll see that, where you might be inclined to kind of speed things up. And that, that's what I usually do. While we're, while we're here in the top right, you can also set the working hours of your beavers. Currently it's set to 16 hours of work and eight hours of sleep or rest. We'll leave it like that for now. And we've got a little clock here showing daytime to nighttime and we're about to come into nighttime. Now, when you first start the game, you start in an area that kind of provides you with the initial resources you need, and you have a little bit, a few, you know, a few supplies to get you going. And uh, one of the buildings here that I just clicked on, this is your warehouse where things are going to be stored. And when you start the game, you'll just have that. And this building up here is a builder's hut. This is where your builders kind of live and work, or not live, but this is where they they work, their work site. And then you also have this little what they call a flag, a lumberjack flag. And this just is like, you can think of these flags as like a work site. And when I click on it, you can see the range of that work site. So in this case, it's a lumberjack flag, and this is gonna house or host up to two beavers that will be doing uh, lumberjack work, which is basically cutting down trees. And this shows the range where they can catch trees. Now I've already been playing for a bit, so 
most of my trees are cut down and I've got just a few little sprouts here getting ready to, uh, to grow. So what do you do when you first start out? You got to go back. You got to go to this, uh, average well-being up in the top left hand side of the screen. And this is going to be a good guideline throughout the game of, Hey, what, what should you be working on next? And we'll see there's a number here. It says six now, and that's kind of the average well-being of my whole colony. We click on that. Here's a list of all the factors that affect the uh, average well-being of the colony. And we've got some of the most basic ones up here at the top. And uh, we'll walk through some of the buildings to, to satisfy those initial ones. Um, but this is always a good guy to come in here and, and get an idea of where you need to kind of shore up your colony, either through buildings or through resources, so that you're increasing their well-being. Now, certain aspects of well-being will increase their uh, lifespan. So I believe having, uh, I'm not sure if it's shelter here. These are some of the houses, they call them lodges. Uh, I believe they increase, let's see, it says right here, actually, a place to spend the night. Dwellers only take on jobs within the range of their home. It's solid, so you can build buildings on top, so you can stack these things. Set up satisfies sleep and it satisfies comfort. And I believe this, it doesn't say it here, but I believe this also gives the beavers a place to reproduce. So I won't go into the details there, but if you want your population to grow, uh, you need to have these lodges in place. Without them, without the lodges, in the very beginning of the game, you won't have any. You'll see your beavers just kind of sleeping out on the, on the ground here, but you want to get houses uh, going pretty soon. The next couple of things you need are water and you get water by placing this building here, which is a pump. You put it at the water's edge. It takes logs to build and it will provide water for your beavers. They definitely need that. And then I've set up a couple storage tanks here uh, just to hold the water. And I'll explain a little bit why I do that in a minute here. You can also see, let's see, we've got a power wheel here. This is uh, this water wheel is providing power to this building. I don't have anybody in there just yet, but uh, this is where I can take logs and turn them into planks. But in order to do that, and there's several other buildings that require power, you're gonna need one of these water wheels or a couple other buildings that are available in the game to generate, to, that will generate power for you. So we've got another water well here. Um, we saw that the, we have a lumberjack, what's called a lumberjack flag up here. Well, in order to gather food resources, you start out, there's a bunch of uh, bushes here with berries on them, you can see, and you'll place one of these gathering flags, and this will host a single worker who is going to go and gather these berries. And we can see this one's doing it right now, gathering the berries, and he's going to haul those into storage. I'm not sure which storage. I got a few storages around here. So he's going to head over, it looks like, to this storage and drop off those berries. And then your colonists, all of your beavers here, when they're hungry, they'll make their way to one of these storages that has food in it and eat the food. And we'll also see beavers, when they get thirsty, come to these water storage units, or they'll actually could come to a water pump too and go get water. So there's one just took a sip. Or no, I think he just dropped off some water and filled up the tank from the pump here. But maybe we'll get to see one, uh, one drinking the water. So it's, you know... In some ways, it's a standard city builder. You can see I've set up a farm here. I've got carrots growing and potatoes growing. And then these are potatoes that are ready to be harvested. And we've got a little beaver there harvesting the potatoes. We've got another beaver here bringing water over, probably from that way far pump into storage. So we've got a pump over here. We've got uh, a couple kitchens here that are cooking up the potatoes, grilling the potatoes and they satisfy a certain level of nutrition that the berries don't. And so a lot of this is kind of what you're familiar with, uh, with, with any kind of colony builder, right? You got your wood, you got to use the wood to build buildings. We see that here, you need to generate power in some way. Here we use the water to do it, the current. And I mentioned there's other ways to generate power later in the game. So what's unique about this one? What's unique about this game, or one of the main things that's really unique, is the water dynamics are just absolutely key. If we look at the land here, if we look at the map, you can see that as I get further away from the water, 
the ground is all dry and barren and we've got like some remnants, some dead trees here. If I click on it, it'll say it's dried out and died. And so things only grow where there's water nearby or in close proximity. And so you might look at the map and say, well, okay, well, you're just going to build a big colony along the, along the coast here of this river, or along the shore of the river, and then that's it, right? You're done. And what do you do about these places where there's hardly any room to build? Well, like we saw at the tail end of that trailer uh, with the dynamite, there's ways where you can use dynamite. And I don't, I'm not at that stage in my game here yet. I haven't developed the technology to do that. Um, but I can blast dynamite and create canals and basically irrigate a bunch of this land and then be able to plant crops, you know, and then add more houses. Obviously the trees will, will, will not grow in this, uh, in this dried out area. So if I need logs, um, for building or for power later on, you can, you can burn these logs for power. Um, I've got to have green land, arable land where I can plant trees or plant crops to grow. So managing the water is a, it's a key, key part of this game. And again, as I just mentioned, you can use dynamite to create canals to spread out the water. Another thing you can do to control the water flow is build dams. And I've got one built here and I may fast forward a bit to, uh, to get to a dry season, but I've built a dam here and the dam will allow, um, it'll hold back the water, but it will allow some to spill out the top. So if, we've, if this is all filled to this level, if this part of the river off to the left here is, is, is high up, then it will eventually kind of spill through. But if the river gets lower, it's going to hold that water and not let any pass through. And that is super important when we get to the dry season. So right now, if we look in the top right, you can see underneath the kind of the daytime clock and the working hours, there's a little indicator here saying that we're currently in the wet season. And it says cycle two, day three. So what happens periodically, and I'll, you know, when I get done babbling here, I will fast forward and we'll get to a dry season. But eventually you have dry seasons and they're kind of, I believe they're somewhat random as to when they come, like which day, you know, which day it comes. It's not like a seven days to die thing where every seventh day you're going to have a drought. But uh, I think they're random. And then the duration, how long those dry seasons last is also, uh, I believe, somewhat random in the game. And it was a feature that at the time of this recording was recently added to the game. So let's just see, once we get a drought, then uh, all this land that we see here, including these berries and these trees and uh, my maybe even my crops are no longer going to be in close proximity to the water and no longer be arable and stuff is going to start dying off. Um, had I not put this dam here to hold back the water, this whole area would dry out. And then uh, I also did a similar thing here. I just put a little dam right in this little area and filled this guy up with water. So now I've got an extra water source. But let me go ahead. I'm going to fast forward the game. So we can see uh, when a drought season comes on and you can just get an idea of that aspect of the game because I think it's just super, super unique. And there's a lot of different strategies using the canals I mentioned, damming off water into, into lakes like this or damming the river as a whole are, are some of those strategies. But let's fast forward and we'll take a look and see if we can get to the dry season. So I will be back once we're at a dry season. All right, we're back. Let's see here. We just now got, uh, we look at the top right here. It says dry season approaching. And just before that happened, I just placed down a forester because I noticed, you know, I've been running, just letting the game run at seven times speed here since before we did our little jump cut. And I noticed that I'm accumulating a bunch of food and I'm but I'm not accumulating any logs. And so once you've mined out the logs or cut them down, they don't grow back unless you place one of these buildings, which I just placed, which is the forester. And then I imagine we need to tell him where to plant trees. 
So there's, if I look at the very bottom of the screen here, I'm selecting plant trees and bushes. I'll select just the pines for now. We won't go into the details on the other trees and I'll just select, Hey, this is the region where I want some trees to be planted. Just select off some of this and then I'll right click to get out of that. And now once our forester is built, he will start planting trees and I can make sure I have wood. I just wanted to break off and do that before this game got, got ruined because I imagine once there's no more logs around, uh, it might be pretty hard to uh, build this actual forester building to get you, get you the logs because that takes uh, logs itself just to build the building. All right, so he's up and running. Let's see. So the dry season's approaching and you can see that we've got kind of a progress bar here letting us, giving us some warning that we're about to head into a drought period. And this is going to take a little time to fill up this progress bar. While it's filling up, let's just look at a couple other things here. We can see we've got a beaver here hauling some goods. And that's a hauler beaver. And they you assign the beavers to different buildings and they have different roles. Um, that's kind of, kind of self-explanatory. The game also has a tech tree. So this building here is what they call the inventor's hut. And right now it just consists of a single worker in there. And he just, by, by staying in this building and researching, he is generating uh, science points for us. And so you'll see this will tick up here to 191. And it's kind of slow. It takes a while. So here it goes. Boom. Oh, 193. Okay, so I guess we get three science points for every time he goes and does his thing. So, and we can use that science to unlock different buildings. So for here, if we look under the food menu down at the bottom, we've already got the gatherer's flag. We saw that. We've got a couple farmhouses already placed here and they're far farming some crops. And then we've got the grill. I think this is one I did actually unlock earlier with these science points, but there's, you know, other buildings here. There's one here to turn uh, wheat into flour and another to bake that into bread. And there's just a, all kinds of buildings here that you need to unlock later using these science points. So there is a little tech tree in place. Let's see what else did I want to show you? I kind of wanted to come into a night cycle so you could see a couple things. Let me uh, speed up the clock here. We'll check out the nighttime and then we will fast forward a little bit more to get to the drought. And uh, we can see what that's all about because that's kind of a key aspect of the game. It's still, this is pre early access. So you got to keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to slow the clock down here. One of the things that I think is really cool about this game, if we look at the needs here back up at the uh, top left of the screen, one of them is a social life. And, and one of the ways that you uh, improve their social lives is putting down this fire pit. And I think this is just hilarious. But uh, at nighttime, when they're done working for the day, but before they go to bed, they'll gather and chat here by this fire pit and that will increase their um, their social well-being. And that helps increase your overall well-being score for the colony. So I thought that was kind of cool, a unique dynamic that I don't recall seeing in other games. Pretty neat, this guy is still wearing his little hauler backpack. Anyway, so that's the nighttime and there's a bunch, you know, this is just a first look video. We're not going to cover every detail here, but I just want to give you a flavor of the game. Let me speed up a little more. I want to, I want to do want to show you that dry season and what that's all about. Again, this is our power wheel generating power. Uh, there's several buildings that require power. And so you may, as the game progresses, have, you know, several of these wheels along the coast, along with, um, along with other buildings that can generate power. There's a like a hamster wheel version for beavers <laughs> where a beaver literally walks in, in a building looks similar to this water wheel and it's basically a giant hamster wheel and that generates power, you know? So, and we'll see very shortly when this dry season approaches when that might actually be useful to have on hand. So let's see how our forester is doing. Okay, he's off and running, planting pine trees like crazy. So that's awesome. So our wood supply, at least in this little game, is not going to be a problem. Um, after this first look video, I am hoping to do a Let's Play series. So watch for that. Uh, it is still, like I said, pre-early access. So a lot of stuff is going to change. They mentioned in a recent uh, developer video that they're even going to change the models for the beavers and improve them even beyond what they are. I think they look, I think they look pretty awesome right now. But uh, that's one of the things they said they're going to change. All right, so let's zoom forward a little bit to the dry season and I'll be right back. 
All right, the dry season is just about upon us there. It is, it just ticked off. So now we're in the dry season. Uh, the dry season takes a little bit of time to actually kick in, even after this, this uh, progress bar starts. So here's our river, and this is kind of where the map starts and where the, our main source of water is coming into the map. We can see we've got a river that snakes around. We already talked about the land that's kind of dry and deserted and uh, dead trees and things where the, where the land is not close to water. And then off to the right here, we have a big lake. Looks like we have a depressed area here that's holding some water in for us, and then it goes off the map. So I should mention that it took quite a few days to get to the dry cycle. Now, when I started this game and one previous playthrough, I think it's like the second day you get like a you get a short dry season happens just to get to expose you to it, and so you're aware of what it is. And then I guess it's random as to when they come up. So probably going to come up right when you least expect it. I'm at three times speed right now. And what we're going to see, I think, is this water is going to start getting a lot less and eventually it's going to dry up. So let me go to seven speed just to get us close, get us there a little quicker so we can see what I'm talking about. All right, now I'm going to go back to one speed. Now you can see that river is drying up. And as it does, these trees are turning yellow. And stuff around the land is starting to dry and crack where there used to be water and where it used to be green, it is now turning uh, not so great. So yeah, you can see it's all drying out. And if we had plants and stuff along here, they're going to start dying off. Like, see, you can see the trees changing. Our berry bushes are drying out. And if we click on a berry bush, it'll say, hey, it's drying out and will die in 9.7 days. Uh, same thing with the trees. It'll dry out and eventually die in 12.4 days. So what we did in our little colony, in my little starter colony, at my first drought, the first drought, my colony died. <laughs> the second time I played, I made this dam. And it takes a while to construct this dam. Each one of these things takes about 20 block, 20 uh, logs, I think, each part of this. But what the dam has done is it's held in the water. So my little colony now is staying pretty green. And uh, I've still got my trees that are going to stay green because I'm close to water here. And I've got my berry bushes and my crops are going to stay green because I've got water. And I've also got another little you know, reservoir of water I've saved here. Um, the other thing that's useful is I've got a place to pump water. Eventually, these two water storage units are going to dry out as my thirsty beavers, here comes one, guzzle that water down. So... It's important to have a source of water nearby during the drought that you can pump from, or you can have a whole bunch of these tanks and there's some larger size tanks too that you can get. You'll also notice that our water wheel that was generating power for what uh, for this building here, which happens to be a sawmill, when it's drought time, the river's not flowing and so you're not getting power from these water wheels. So you need to kind of plan ahead for drought time of how you're going to uh, generate power. And if we look down here at the power button at the toolbar there at the bottom of the screen, you can see there's several buildings involved. Some of them are the shafts, which just transmit power from the generator to the building that needs it. And then we've got uh, another building here, which is the engine that comes later. And you'll see we need metal to actually construct that. If you see kind of the fourth, fifth line down, it says, materials, 20 logs, five gears, and 10 metal. And then you've got the hamster wheel I talked about here, which is a beaver operated backup source of power. So we could generate those. But that's kind of, I just wanted to show you kind of the impacts of the drought, show you how the bushes kind of, and the trees kind of start to dry out. So that's something you need to keep in mind as you're expanding your colony. Uh, what else is there that I can cover? Again, it's just a first look. Uh, there's a lot to this game. It's more than just uh, beavers <laughs> as a colony builder. There's actually, uh, there's actually a lot that's gone into this. So, you know, there's some games that are kind of flat and kind of mechanical and kind of uh, just follow the recipe and tick off the boxes uh, for city builders. This one, you can tell a lot of passion and attention to detail has gone in and, and, and they've really explored the whole aspect of having a colony of beavers and what that, and what that would be like with the dams and managing water and stuff. So anyway, I think that's it for a first look. 
you got a good idea of what the game is about and a flavor. And again, I'm hoping to create a Let's Play series for this. They are actively developing it, so things change quickly. I watched some um, I watched some videos of the game before I put this together, and a bunch of stuff had changed since uh, I even saw those videos. So it's a game under flux. Go check out the Discord if this is a game you're interested in. Uh, watch for the uh, contests that they have where they give out uh, beta test keys. And then if you're if you're not lucky enough to get a beta test key through those contests, then uh, it is supposed to release an early access uh, this quarter or Q1 2021 as I record this. So watch for that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the content. Once again, uh, please do like the video if you did like it and give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I feature a lot of city builders and factory games right now on the channel. Many more to come along with, again, this Let's Play, I hope coming soon. So for now, this is Glidercat saying thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.